only a few Americans choose the dangerous and necessary work of fighting our nation's enemies. As a consequence of that choice, some have paid the ultimate price. It is our obligation to honor those fallen Marines. As Marines gather in celebration of our history, we gather in the shadows of greatness. Though our fallen can no longer participate in our traditions, they will always be a part of us and who we are. I know of no other family who has given so much for our country. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor, a great American and a great Marine, General James T. Conway. Our brigades of Marines went in to blunt a German thrust, the final thrust of the war, really, against Paris. We were put into a place called Belle Wood, and with the rest of our counterparts, Army counterparts, in the 2nd Infantry Division, stopped that German attack, and for all intents and purposes, commenced what would eventually be then the, the end of that war. World War II, Marines, the 1st Marine Division, hastily formed, was deposited on the island of Guadalcanal. It was the first time in their history where the Japanese Imperial Army had been defeated. And it would start the rollback in the Pacific and set the stage for those three years that would, that would follow. Korea, only a few years later, again hastily formed the 1st Marine Division into the Pusan perimeter to stop attacks that would break the line and, and collapse that, uh, that uh, peninsula. But then uh, asked to do something that few people had confidence in, and I was to make an amphibious assault well behind enemy lines at a place called Incheon. It succeeded. It broke the back of the North Korean army. Seoul followed, and then the march up to the Chosen Reservoir. Vietnam, I told, where Marines served, placed up against the North Korean border, but certainly provided for the fact that our people would be going against the best they had to offer which was the North Vietnamese Army. Our Marines had great respect for them, but they never defeated us in a major engagement in the field. Ever since World War I, our Corps, uh, at the dictates of General Germany, has made the effort to celebrate our birthday, whether in peace or, or in common. In Korea, there is the oral history of a company commander on the 7th Marine. And as they were marching north towards the Chosin, he gave his mess sergeant instructions. Get everything you need to make a cake on 10 November. Well, come 10 November, they were on a hillside defense. They were being shelled by North Korea, and he would later find out probably Chinese artillery. So he couldn't have those Marines all together. He brought them in in groups of six. And there they cut the cake. They shook the hands of the oldest and the youngest Marine in that tent and they went back to their positions. That company commander reflected that one of his enduring memories from that war was seeing that white piece of cake in those dirty hands as they listened to General Zern's message. Three of his Marines would not see the sun rise that next morning as a result of the contact that night. In Vietnam, 1970, a colonel named Walter Gorman would later go on to be one of our system commandants, was head of an advisory group. He decided on 10 November he would send a helicopter to pick up his nine advisors, all serving with Vietnamese battalions, the residents, and bring them in for the day. He did so. They had no cake, so they used a pound cake that we found in our sea rations. <laughs> they decided who was the oldest and the youngest. <laughs> they cut the cake, shared a couple bottles of rum, exchanged stories of their most recent experiences and flew back that back to those hilltop positions. You'll see a cake wheeled in here in a few moments. It's not about the cake. It's about the symbology that's associated with it. A piece of cake, of course, will be handed to the guest of honor, but more importantly, a second and third piece will be handed to the oldest Marine and the youngest Marine present. That oldest Marine will pass the piece to the youngest. He's passing more than just cake. He's passing along and understand that someone will take care of you on the battlefield. 
We will nurture and train you until you're almost as good as I am. Because one day, I expect that you'll, you'll take that job. He's passing the honor, the courage, the commitment that the old already understand and know to the young that will carry our legacy. And our young Marines today are incredible, and they are carrying that legacy. You know, we didn't always think so. Probably a couple of 15 years ago, a bunch of silver-haired guys like me got together, and we expressed concern about this new generation. Would they be able to make good soldiers and Marines? Were they tough enough? Did they have the discipline? Were they doing too much of the joystick thing inside instead of getting outdoors and, and having contact sport? Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we were wrong. We were dead wrong. This is an incredible young generation. I've seen them in combat. And their raw courage, their sense of self-sacrifice, their sense of team play literally brings tears to your eyes. Ronald Reagan once said that freedom is just one generation away from extinction. We do not pass it along in a bloodstream to our children. It must be preserved and sometimes fought for by those who hold it dear. That is an apt description of this young generation today. And the trend is continuing. All three, as we cross the line into Iraq, the Army had a huge sweeping involvement of some 10,000 vehicles aimed at the heart of Baghdad, which we all understood was the center of gravity. The Marine Corps, in a flanking attack on the right, had more enemy, worse terrain, and three major rivers to cross. And yet, victory was ours. We went back later on, not into the south where the Shiites were, and were relatively quiet, not where the Kurds welcomed an American president, uh, president. We went into the belly of the beast, into the Anbar province, where the Sunnis were, who had been the best of Saddam's army. And it was a tough fight for a couple, two or three years. Rugged battalion commanders who understood how to conduct those fights were taking rotation. And even more rugged young Marines, like these people you see standing up here today, who know how to execute those fights, were the essence of the victory. The Sunni awakening didn't start when my good friend David Petraeus got into Baghdad with the surf. It started well before that in the Anbar province and spread. The great young generation. And today, in Afghanistan, once again, they find themselves in Helmand province otherwise known as the birthplace of the Taliban. This year, for the first in five years, attacks are done. And Marines are doing great things there, just as we expected they would, and just as Marines have always done. Last year, on 10 November, the battalion commander decided the best thing you can do on a Marine Corps birthday is kill the enemy. So he launched a two-company attack that was pretty successful. And at the end of the day, he brought his people back aboard his operating base, and they had steak and cake. This year, there were less enemy to attack. And so a battalion commander uh, loaded up six gates and flew with he and his sergeant major out to six different locations. And at each location, they had the oldest and the youngest standing by, and they cut the cake. The battalion commander saw him shook every hand of every dirty faced Marine and wished him well. Now those young Marines need something from you. I'll use an analogy to, to make the point. Uh, several months ago, we had an embedded reporter serving with us in Afghanistan. And he had been with us for about two and a half weeks or so. He was writing his wife, daily email. And after a few days, she said, you know, I'm finding I'm not so much different from these Marines. We talk about sports and cars and women. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little older, but, but I really think maybe I could have been a Marine. One morning, not long after you written those words, they were having breakfast in this old building that the Afghans had condemned. Think about that, bro. <laughs> All of a sudden, firing broke out, 200 meters off to the flank. Her sister platoon was in contact. All of a sudden, they said, let's go. And with that, every Marine was grabbing his rifle, his helmet, and his slack here and dashing out the door. Hitting the pivot point, and hit it towards the fire. Our reporter friend flushed outside with all the activity, and he said he got down behind an old stone well 
and nothing he could do could propel his legs to move him towards the sound of that bomb. He said the very thought of getting in range of a machine gun that would hit him in the chest or a rocket propelled grenade that would blow him up kept him from going anywhere. And so he realized, I'm not like these guys at all. He questioned one of the team leaders when they got back. How do you do that? And the answers were, were numerous. He said, well, it's what I'm paid to do. I'm a Marine. My buddies are going and my buddies are in trouble. And we're all about taking care of our buddies. But you know, it also helps that the country is behind us. Because we know if we go down, we've got the best medical treatment here on the battlefield. We'll be evacuated out of here within the hour. If we go down hard, we've got the best medical survey, both in Germany and in the States, hospitals that are going to take really good care of us. And if we go down for good, we know somehow our country will take care of our families. He said, you know, there's another part to it. We want to make sure that those old Marines who gave us their legacy understand that we're trying to maintain so ladies and gentlemen, my, my message to you tonight is if you are a civilian, every time you have the opportunity to, I don't care if it's a Marine or not, say thank you to the service man or woman and express your appreciation for them stepping up at a time when our country really needed for them to do so. When you are in the audience, put your hand around the shoulder. Just tell them you're proud of them. And that indeed, our court today is carrying on our legs. God bless you all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.